I know I didn't expect to talk about it until next week, but did you guys start getting your shipping notifications? Kicking us off this week, I'd like to say happy birthday to Lily. Lily's birthday was on September 4th. And in Lily's birthday announcement, Mike had said that she was born when a lily pad had opened up for the first time in over a hundred years. In all seriousness though, Lily, I hope you had a wonderful birthday and I can't wait to see what you continue to do with MetaZoo. We got our first tease of the Seance Added Color song this week. It starts out with a music box kind of beat to it. About 20 seconds into that, it picks up and a little more instrumentals are added to that. And then 40 seconds in, the lyrics start. From the very brief lyrics that we heard, it sounds like the song is going to be about when the veil had shattered. The sign up for the Seance Partnerships has gone live, so if you're an LGS and want to become a partner, there's a link in the description below to the form to sign up for that. As part of the form, there's a link to the partnership details, what you need to agree to to become a partner. Partners will get allocation directly from MetaZoo at distributor pricing for up to 500 of each SKU, and these will ship directly from MetaZoo. They'll also get special prize support and MPN kits. Partners will still receive two LGS kits, as well as special MetaZoo partner promos. And as with existing partners, they will have access to special direct-to-consumer products such as Magicast, Revive, fan art packs, etc. Now, in order for a LGS to qualify for partnership, they need to be signed up and registered on the MPN. If they're an online store, they still need to put on events in a rented space or engage in some other form of community building, such as creating YouTube videos, writing articles, doing meetups, really anything that helps build the community. The LGS also needs to be signed up on the store locator and a link is provided for that. They need to host at least three MetaZoo sanction play or release events on the MPN per month. And they need to agree to the same map and MSRP rules as with UFO, which is the map price is 80% of MSRP and MSRP is guaranteed for one week before the release and two weeks after. They need to agree to pre-release rules, which is that the pre-release period is one week before general release and partners are unable to sell before this. Now, I'm not exactly sure what that means because the pre-order window for partners is actually about two and a half weeks before the street date. And the other pre-release rule is that pre-orders cannot be shipped until the day before street date. They also need to agree to the brick and mortar online sale rules, which is that partners and brick and mortar storefronts, with the exception of streaming platforms such as Whatnot and Drip, cannot sell more than 20% of their partner allocation. Partners that are entirely online cannot sell online in the typical marketplace. All sales need to be channeled through a Patreon or some other form of membership platform. If you're familiar with Rudy, you know exactly what this looks like. And partners that are entirely online can sell up to 20% of their allocation on streaming platforms like Whatnot and Drip. Single sales are allowed in online marketplaces and streaming platforms such as Whatnot and Drip are not allowed until the day before street date. The allocation rules are very similar to UFO. The LGS needs to take 10% of their allocation, so they need to take at least 50 out of the 500 units of each SKU. And if they fail to take the 10% of their allocation, they will be removed as a MetaZoo partner. They also agree not to resell their allocation to another store, influence, streamer, etc. And this one has bit a few LGSs in the past. They need to continue to uphold the high standards of community development and support expected of an LGS that represents the MetaZoo brand. To put that a little more bluntly, if you are a MetaZoo partner, you are a brand ambassador. And a brand ambassador is somebody that supports the brand. If you are publicly smearing Menazu, don't expect to be a partner. Now, this announcement was the first time we heard about the pre-order periods. The pre-order starts on October 5th, 2022 for partners and October 10th, 2022 for everybody else. On top of that, this was also the first time that we got a look at the street date for Seance. Seance officially releases on October 21st, 2022, a week before the sale and release event. So if you're looking to become a partner, those are the rules that you need to follow and abide. I know Immortal Workshop, the sponsor of this channel, is looking to become a partner, and I really hope that he gets a chance to become one. MetaZoo has announced in their Discord that they are hiring for a full stack 
developer to work on the website and some other apps likely pertaining to the website. And this is incredibly exciting for two reasons. One, when they're hiring, they're going to reach out to the community to let them know that they have a position open. A lot of the people in the community are eager to work for MetaZoo. And unfortunately for me, almost all of my experience is on the back end. And the other exciting thing that this means is that we're going to be getting updates to the website and new functionality that will likely bridge the gap between the website and say the MPN and bring everything together in a more cohesive manner. During the MetaZoo hour, we got a look at what I assume is a caster here coming through a ring of spirits. If this is art for a caster card, I imagine that this caster is not going to be a good individual. They seem to be more evil aligned. And with the rate that we're getting seance spoilers, I imagine we're actually going to find out pretty soon. The other tease that we got during the MetaZoo Hour was a very quick post and delete of the Spirit Tower. This art will be used for the Spirit Tower promo. It depicts a very tall tower with purple skies and a pinkish purple ring around the top of the tower. It's set in autumn, sometime around Halloween most likely, and has gravestones littering the front of the tower. Now it's no surprise if you've been watching this channel, I believe that the Salem release event is actually going to be a tower event. So I'm really hoping that we'll be getting to see this soon, around the time of October 29th. We got a look at the second anniversary celebration cards in hand, and there's going to be two color variants to this. There's the normal coloring that we expect, and there's one that's a little bit lighter. And what I imagine happened here is that there was a mass print error at the printers that made for a large number of these being lighter, and MetaZoo was rolling with it. And if I'm being completely honest, I actually like the lighter color one better. We got our first look at the gold MetaZoo supporter medal, and alongside that, Mike had said, this is gold and quite nice, but what if it were actually a gold medal medal? Hmm. The flavor text on the card also reads, you know their name, you recognize their avatar, a true legend. So this is very likely what we've been referring to as the Discord medals over the past couple weeks. It's unclear what part of the card will actually be made of metal. It could be just the metal that is next to Sam St. Clair. It could be metal foiling for the hollow foil background. It could be the entire card. And looking back, it was also teased that there would be silver and bronze versions of these medals as well. It's also unclear how many people will be eligible for the medal, or even what the eligibility is. A lot of people have assumed that it is related to rank, so when these were announced, you saw people being a bit more active in the Discord. You saw some people being overly active in the Discord. And I've seen some instances of people spamming the Flork command in the Flork room. Another viable option is that MetaZoo keeps a close eye on their Discord. They know who's active. They know who is helping the community. So they could hand pick who is going to be receiving these medals as well. Now, me personally, I can think of a few people that are consistently active, keep the conversation light and flowing, are incredibly helpful to existing and new members of the Discord, and deserve to have one of these medals. Now we did get more information about Trick No Treat this week. The first drop was a sketch of a Chibi Grim Reaper wearing a Loveland Frogman suit. Now we do know that we will be getting a Loveland Frogman mask as well as a Mothman mask, and I think that with this sketch, we can also expect to have a Grim Reaper mask. And on top of that, we did get a look at an artifact mask card that we'll be getting with this set, the Indrid Cold Mask. The card itself is called Activated Indrid Mask, and that's a play on Activated Charcoal Mask, so I find that to be quite funny. You must be wearing a mask to contract the card, and it allows you to equip it to a beastie. That beastie that it becomes equipped to loses all its traits, cannot gain traits, and becomes a dark or a beastie. Now, I assume that there's a bit of a typo here because it adds effect text to the equipped beastie that says it adds dark to all dark beasties you control or beasties with a mask equipped. Now, how do you add dark to dark beasties? It doesn't quite make sense. Will that typo make it to the finalized version? We're going to have to find out. With the Flork shirt sales successfully behind us, it was announced this week that they are going to have Flork LGS boxes. 
Now it's unclear from the announcement what these boxes will contain, but I do imagine it's going to be a shirt. And after that tease, they showed the letters LGS in Florks style. So I imagine that the shirt or maybe the promo, definitely the box is going to be marked with a special LGS Flork stamp. As we look to more traditional seance teases, we got the full look of the spell book for seance. This has the tome looking art that we've previously seen with the golden hands in each corner and a seance ring is now seen in the middle of the art and resembles the spin wheel from Long Beach Collecticon. The spellbook will have the normal contents. It'll have 10 booster packs, a holofoil promo, a metal coin, a rule book, 60 sleeves, a token sheet, and an aura deck. It's also been teased multiple times that the aura deck in the spellbook is going to have a hollow aura in it, similar to what they used to do with Cryptid Nation 2nd Edition. On top of the spellbook, we also got a look at all four blister packs for Seance. All four of the art you see here have been done by Poncho, and the first one we have in the front there is called the Ghosts of Sloss Furnaces. That's fun to say with a lisp. This is a dual aura spirit fire beastie. It's a two drop costing one spirit and one fire aura, and you can have three per spellbook. Behind that, we have some sort of devil. I was not able to find the true name of this beastie. And this is the beastie that we've seen on the pack arts and on the seance mat. It's a one drop dark beastie with 30 LP. We have a new moth creature as the third promo. This is a three drop costing one dark and two spirit. So it's a dark spirit or a beastie and has 35 life points. The flavor text mentions that a seance is needed to wake people up from sleep that are affected by this beastie. So I imagine that one of the powers relating to this beastie will put opposing beasties to sleep. And lastly, that fourth promo we have is the Black Dog of Hanging Hills. You can actually see the name in the flavor text down below. And this is a two drop, one neutral, one spirit beastie with 35 life points. So I'm incredibly excited to get my hands on these blisters. I'm really excited that they decided to do four different promos again. It makes the blister packs very collectible, and it gives a reason to order multiples of the same blister pack. I don't even want to count how many Cumberland Dragon promos I have. If you're looking around websites, you actually might be seeing that Seance pre-order placeholders are popping up. And one of the things that we can figure out from that placeholder is the other theme decks. We know of two theme decks already. We have St. Germain, which is a dark spirit theme deck. We have Love, which is a water earth theme deck. And from these pre-order placeholders, we don't know what the beasties are of the other three theme decks, but we do know that they are Dark Light, Forest Spirit, and Fire Light. I'm actually pretty excited about the Forest Spirit deck because that means I might be right about a Spirit Bigfoot existing. So I can't wait to figure out what the three beasties that are going to be headlining these theme decks are going to be. Now this next one is a bit enigmatic. We got Mike who dropped a green circle a letter T with a blue box and a blue butterfly. Now I did some research and I did find a green tea company called Butterfly, but this doesn't typically fit the type of partnership that MetaZoo moves forward with. So I feel like this isn't the correct thing that he was trying to hint at. So this one doesn't quite make a whole lot of sense to me. I feel like we're going to figure this out in a later announcement and we're going to look back on this and go, aha, that's what it meant. So if you have any ideas what this could mean, leave a comment in the comments below. Kansas City Collecticon is fast approaching. It'll be the same dates as the Mothman Festival, September 17th and 18th. They will be hosting a tournament at Kansas City Collecticon, and the participants of that tournament will have a chance to win the coveted first, second, and third place medals in the tournament. On top of those medals, the winners will walk away with a UFO bundle featuring a booster box, spell book, all the pack arts for the blister packs, etc. And then on both the 17th and 18th, they will be holding a casual sealed event, and this will be a learn to play event to encourage new players to pick up medicine. Now this week in the chat, Mike had asked the entire chat if they were given a blank check to do a collaboration, who would we want to see MetaZoo work with. And the chat erupted for well over an hour, coming up with a bunch of different collaborations they want to see, long after Mike had said, okay, that's enough, we're moving on. And honestly, this is a great way for MetaZoo to get an idea of what the community wants 
as well as finding partnerships that they had never thought of themselves to do yet. What better reason to run a community than to get the community feedback on what the company could be looking to do in the future. Now, personally, while I'm up on this soapbox, I would like to see a Lego collaboration. I feel that there's a lot that MetaZoo could do with Legos, and Legos themselves span a very wide age group. So it would fit the nostalgia factor of the older age groups, as well as appeal to the younger crowd who might just be getting into Lego. And then later in the week, Mike had then asked, who should we partner with? Spotify, YouTube, Amazon, iTunes, all of them. So it sounds like there might be some of these collaborations coming forward. Spotify and iTunes make sense with the added color songs. Maybe there's more on top of that. As we get into the IP, there is going to likely be some original soundtrack that goes with that. I am curious what they would do on the YouTube side, what that would look like, if that would encourage people to do more live streams on YouTube. And then Amazon obviously would be likely some form of selling something special on Amazon. It would be great exposure for MetaZoo to be on one of the biggest selling platforms there is. I would be curious to see what they would put on Amazon because I do feel like partnering with Amazon somewhat conflicts with the narrative that they have around supporting the LGS. If it were a special release similar to what they've done with eBay, maybe that would be great. But if they started putting core products on Amazon, I feel like this would end up hurting the LGSs as a whole. So I'm excited to see what they could do with Amazon, but I'm also a little bit skeptical. UFO hangers have landed in Walmarts this week. These are similar to the hangers that we saw for Wilderness in that they have three packs, and surprisingly, the three packs are first edition. Now, I did expect Walmart to get the big box treatment, but it's possible that the big box logo or design was not ready for when the UFO hangers went into production. This also means, however, that you are able to pull space rares and any kind of secret rare that may exist from UFO in these Walmart hangers. Each hanger also has the possibility to get one of three different promos. On the box, you can see Lechuza, and the two other promos that you're able to get are Hatman and Pomola. Now, if you're looking for this in a Walmart, the wilderness hangers were in a white half box. It was very hard to tell if they were on the shelves from quickly looking and if they were sold out. With UFO, the half boxes are MetaZoo branded, so you'll be able to easily tell where they are on the shelves and if they had them in stock at one point but are currently sold out. We got a look at the red bordered tarot cards. These will be first available on October 6th which coincides with New York Comic Con. We do already know that these tarot cards will be available at New York Comic Con, so the date makes sense. And this is the first time that we're seeing the red bordered cards as opposed to the black bordered samples that were released at Long Beach Collecticon. And we did also find out in the chat this week that these will be sold as an eBay Live exclusive item. MetaZoo and eBay Live are also making their debut at New York Comic Con. So keep an eye on the discords, keep an eye on anything related to eBay and MetaZoo in early October. And to date on those tarot cards, it's still unclear whether or not we're going to be able to buy a full set of tarot cards, or if this is going to be something along the lines of a booster pack where we need to collect a number of cards, trade them with other people, and amass a whole deck of tarot cards that we could use ourselves. Because of the functionality of tarot cards, I expect that it's going to be the former that we're going to be able to buy the full decks. We did have yet another spaceware pulled this week, and it was pulled by another content creator. While opening packs for his patrons, Argos has pulled a Sky Snake. Hey, you got a... Oh my god! Dude, you freaking did it! Oh, you got a sight! You, you did it! This Sky Snake is number 8 of 10, and this leaves just four more space rares that we haven't seen. The two Cosmics, which I speculate is UFO and Greys. The Spirit Beastie, which we know is Lechuza from the Silhouette Tees. And the Neutral Beastie, which is widely thought to be Mike the Headless Chicken. As always, if you want to keep up with the Space Rares or any of the other serialized rares in MetaZoo, check out MetaZooSR.com, which is run by a member of the community, Alan J. And if you yourself ever pull a serialized rare, reach out to Alan in the Discord so he can add it to the website. Now, for last week's trivia question, I had asked what was the first 
first card released that featured Afton's art. And I feel like this was the first question that really tripped a lot of people up. The first card released with Afton's art was actually the 2022 C2E2 promo. This features Dingbell landing on Mars, and this is actually the first time we see the little green men. So I've added everybody to the spin wheel that got that correct, and we'll give that a very quick shuffle and spin and figure out who won this week's $15 gift card to Immortal Workshop. And the winner is Pokemon Fan Club. Thank you for participating in last week's trivia question and congratulations on your $15 gift card to Immortal Workshop. And for this week's question, I would like you to name the beastie that even after its transformation, still hungers for the hearts of the young. Get that answer correct and you will be on next week's spin wheel for the $15 gift card to Immortal Workshop. It's also worth noting that the gift cards do not expire, so if you do win and you want to hold on to that until Seance is out, you can do that as well. And before we get on to the top story, I would also like to say that I have started posting content to TikTok, so if you'd like to take a look at that, the link is in the description below. And what I hope to do is as I'm recording the news throughout the week, actually start posting stuff up on TikTok a little bit early. And now for our top story. HeroQuest is finally showing up on our doorsteps. And this is huge. We had no idea that this was actually coming out this early. There was no announcement saying that they were about to start shipping. People just started getting their shipping notifications. So obviously there has been a ton of excitement around HeroQuest in the last couple days. And originally we were told that we were gonna get these in mid-September. So for everybody complaining about late things coming from MetaZoo, can't talk about this one. And now that people are showing off their pulls, there's a few things that we now know about HeroQuest. Every single card in the set is considered gold or rare and is holofoil. We also now know that there are 66 cards in the set. A fair amount of the cards in the set are reprints of existing cards with new HeroQuest themed art. And it was noticed that where the location would be on a normal MetaZoo card, it's been replaced with something called Faction. And thank you for Happy Kitty 5 for pointing this out. From the cards that we've seen so far, we know that there are five factions. We have the Astrals, which consist of cards like the Headless Horseman, Sewer Alligator, and Walking Sam. We have the Torobots, which seem to be the robot-type beasties that we see in HeroQuest, so your Wendigo, your Hodag. We have the Diasos, which seem to be mutant-type creatures such as Oklahoma Octopus, Sam St. Clair, Dark Watchers. We have the Extants, which are zombie-like creatures, so this is your zombie mothman, your Iowa dragon, your uncle Sam, and you have the OIO which are the pixel or computer generated style beasties that we've seen such as snipe, unicorn, and UFO. There are also a number of new cards in the set and a lot of these have to do with listening to a certain type of music to be able to contract it. For example, for severed limbs you need to be listening to metal music to be able to contract it. There's even an artifact called Widmanstaten Artifact that if you're hearing white noise nearby the page gains self-destruct. That artifact when destroyed Dark and Cosmic Beasties gain Poison 1 on their attacks until end of turn. We have a new card called Appetite for Flesh, which allows you to create new Beastie Zombie tokens. Every time a zombie you control destroys another Beastie when you whisper fresh meat. And we have this new artifact, Black Pullet Ring, which allows you to contract a Dark Artifact with an aura cost 3 or less from your Limbo. Now, I myself haven't seen the full set of cards. These are just some examples of what we've seen so far. Keep an eye out on MetaZoo HQ over the coming week for a populated list of cards. MetaZoo HQ is usually pretty quick to get the set lists up as they become available. So needless to say, I'm pretty excited to receive my hero quest. For me, I won't have them until Thursday, so even by the time you're watching this video, I won't have hero quest in hand. I have 20 coming, and just from seeing the hero quest cards that I've seen so far, it's not going to be enough. And yes, I get that many of these are reprints of existing cards that I can get in the core set, but the art here, in my opinion, is just amazing. And despite some of the cards that require you to listen to a specific type of music to contract it, I do feel like some of the unique cards in HeroQuest are going to be pretty useful. So I'm looking forward to seeing that whole set and figuring out how these cards can be used in competitive play. So let me know in the comments below, did you get HeroQuest and what do you think? Well, that's all I have for you this week. If you did not catch the MetaZoo Hour last week, you can catch that 
right over there, there were some interesting topics that came up in that MetaZoo Hour. So thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.